I'm kind of working with a little bit of an advantage when I play solo because it's I never played with a band much until I was 26 or 27 years old. I'm, I really am a folky. Acoustic's not a fallback position for me. It's like what I constantly threaten my managers and publishers and everybody else with is the fact that I, I can busk and you know I have the technology. So it's one of those things I don't know. Uh, you know, I, it's very comforting to me knowing that I can go out and I can do this by myself with my guitar. It's not a, it's, it's, it's sort of home base for me. It's hard to play solo, so you watch other artists and you go, how do, how do, they, make, how do they make that work, you know? I, I mean, I, I made a John Bias record, which was sort of like, you know, you get the call to produce a John Bias record if you're me, you know, and it's like, John has already recorded several of my songs, which is a huge, it's, a, it's, it's the first thing in my resume as far as I'm concerned. And, um, but the answer is like, duh. I mean, I I, I, I I don't produce that many records, but I could not do this. And and it was, um, you know, I took away from it two really good songs that I ended up recording myself. I wrote them specifically for the project, specifically for her to sing. And I even asked her permission before I recorded them uh, myself. But I never would have written those songs. She's like, really is a part of the history of you know, why I do this. This job required, doing it as long as I've been doing it, requires reinventing yourself every few years. I mean, you have to, the only successful way that I know to do that is to have some sort of constant connection to, to where I come from. I started out having, just like a lot of bands, like I didn't really even know any other musicians. I came to Austin and I didn't really uh, know anybody at all and it took me a long time to even get shows a lot of the time because I realized eventually like, well you're supposed to put together a bill with your friends and that's how the promoters um, put it together and I, you know, I just didn't like, I didn't even want to sing songs, I just wrote songs and I wanted somebody else to sing them and finally it was sort of like, well I, I guess I got to sing them myself and then I was like, I guess I got to perform myself. So it was this long kind of slow struggle coming up, but gradually um, as I got more successful that was when I started to have those moments where I would meet older musicians who had really inspired me a lot and like when Lou Reed for example, like I found out he was a fan and I met him and we played together and all that stuff. I um, it was a really powerful thing for me because I was this guy who everybody thought I was a shitty singer and everybody like would, you know, it's like once Blue Reed's told you he thinks you're a great singer, you're like, wow. I think that's the moment I became a, a good singer was when he said that. Working with Rocky really was freeing for me because he's an artist who just completely leaps into the unknown and trusts that it's going to work. Playing with him live, the amount of times he's gone from a complete horrible disaster to something really beautiful and sublime, it's, it's a crazy number of times. So he kind of gave me this faith to just let it go and believe that it's going to work and go, oh, you know, I'm just going to, maybe art will happen from this. I don't know, it feels kind of strange right now. Uh, Mark Guitar, my name in it.